Today we will hear about how we should serve each other.
Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is Father. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld the Edens were then rivers. The dark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Aesopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconcil reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is water life. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love your choice beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for your death, loving you above all things. 
we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts chapter 10. While Peter shares the good news of Jesus with a Gentile soldier and his family, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Recognizing that the Spirit works inclusively in the lives of both Jews and Gentiles, Peter commands that these Gentiles also be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who had heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Word of God, word of life. We will now read Psalm 98 responsibly. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing, sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second reading is from 1 John. God's children believe that Jesus is the Messiah and love God by keeping God's commandments. Thus the world is conquered not through military might, but through love and faith. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and the blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is in truth. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory On the night of his arrest, Jesus delivers a final testimony to his disciples to help them in the days ahead. Here he repeats the most important of all his commandments, that they love one another. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. 
You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. The story is told of a young boy who had cancer. During his treatment, he was unable to continue to go to school. Of course, when he finally was able to show up at school, he had no hair because of the chemotherapy treatment. A few days later, no one in his class had hair either. They all shaved their heads, girls and boys, and the teacher. Jesus in our gospel today says, Love one another as I have loved you. I have called you my friend. You did not choose me, but I have chosen you. The little boy with cancer probably had a friend or two in his class, but his entire class, including the teacher, called him their friend. They loved their friend as Jesus loved them. They gave, no questions asked. They had to go home with their bald heads to be with others, just as their classmate with cancer had to do. They chose to love their classmate rather than make fun of him, or even pity him for that matter. They simply were with him, gave him companionship, gave him strength, gave him love. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. What a show of love and companionship that these students showed for their classmate. However, other than instances such as this, in this day and time, it has been said and written that mostly we really do not live within this commandment of Jesus. We primarily watch out for ourselves and our closest loved ones. If we do reach out, it is mostly through organizations, such as giving to soup kitchens, Goodwill, other charitable organizations. But how often do we reach out with ourselves to another, such as this class, to this classmate? Often we do not want to get involved because it may mean a long time involvement or an entangled involvement. We are really caught in a self-preservation versus self-giving situation. And we know once, it get, once we give, it continues. Yet each of us has been given our own gifts and we use them accordingly. I did not receive the charitable gifts from my mother. My mother was very gregarious. She invited every homeless person that she met to our home. Sometimes I would come home from school and some strange person, man or woman, would be sitting at the kitchen table, having eaten, but now in prayer and Bible study with my mother. I would hurry to my room. Quite honestly, I don't think I nor either one of my brothers inherited my mother's generosity or charitability. It indeed was a gift from God to her, and she used it generously. Did we ever see any of those people at church or receive any kind of thank you? No. But that was not the point, was it? She loved others as Jesus loved her. She did not give it a second thought. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. My mother did so, 
in a way she knew how, and in the way she loved to do so. We do not all love one another the same way. My mother loved others as Jesus gave her the gift to do so. Each one of us also has been given the gift to love one another as Jesus loves us. So we pray, Jesus, just as you loved me, enable me to love others. The commandment is not love one another the way I loved you. The commandment is love one another as I have loved you. Let us confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who have spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners. God of grace. You speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that habitats and every kind of living thing might flourish. Protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace. Your world is divided and the nations rage. Grant wisdom and vision to world leaders that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace. Your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer, especially those afflicted by anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love and our care for one another, especially those we name now either silently or aloud. God of grace, your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministry of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world. Inspire those who plan and lead worship, council members, committee members, and volunteers. God of grace. Join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. God of grace. Your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful heart for those who have gone before us. At the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet. God of grace. Your high school administrators, teachers, and students are completing their studies for this year. As they prepare for their final exams and look forward to summer vacation, our partners in prayer focus this week pray that you grant them wisdom. Lord, as they navigate the complexities of academics, help them to find their purpose and passion and give them the courage to pursue their dreams with perseverance and determination. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed us, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you send in this end of the ages, to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inspirable from you, through whom you created all, all things, and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin swamp. He there look on our nature and our lot and was shown for as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. Taking bread and giving thanks to you said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all to drink. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts Send our spirit upon these gifts for your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth. That way we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. For those at home and those in the pews, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Some announcements. First of all, please uh, sign up uh, for the flowers for the man shelter, which I think is a very good ministry, and they really need help to serve meals. Um, there will also be a crochet and knitting circle starting on, I don't know exactly what, Tuesday. It will be Tuesday morning, so refer to Sherry. She knows it better than me. Um, Last but not least, I want to say thank you for you, as this is my last Sunday of my internship. So it's my last Sunday as an intern. I will continue in this congregation, but I want to say thank you for you who made this a really good experience for me. Please stand for the blessing. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad.